Could this happen, San Antonio Spurs fans? Should it happen? We'll talk about that today. I don't ever slow up. No, I don't take shit. I got no love for the fakeness. If you want to play tough and want to hate this, I'll always show up and make a statement. What is up, San Antonio Spurs fans? Welcome to TSR Sports. We've been talking a lot about maybe trading some prospects, players, whatnot. For the opportunity to draft a point guard along with Victor Wambayamba. But what if the Spurs went in a different direction and they drafted his teammate, Bilal Colby? We're going to look at his scouting report and just give me your thoughts. Is this a player you'd want to combo with Victor? I mean, they play together, so that could be a good thing for the Spurs' future, right? I don't know. Drop a comment down below. Hit the thumbs up, like, sports channel, fast one free, nutritious, and delicious. And subscribe for more Spurs content. There's going to be a lot of content coming, especially when the Spurs start going live again later this year. The live games are going to be a lot of fun doing those streams and watching. The man, the myth, the legend, Victor Wemiyama, play for our Spurs. Anyway, let's get into the video, Spurs fans. Who is Bill Alcalami and what does he do? He's a six foot six, I will call him a wing, 230 pounds. He's 19 years old. They said small forward, but one century we call him a wing. Offensive role is a slasher, off ball finisher. His defensive role, he's a versatile point of attack defender and a roamer. Projected draft range anywhere from 10 to 30. That is, that is quite the range. So I don't know where he's going to go in this upcoming draft. If the Spurs see him available, though, they have a lot of draft capital. Could they, should they, maybe draft some of that draft capital at a transit below Colby or in a crazy, Cola Bailey, excuse me, in a crazy world, do the Spurs do enough with trades, players, draft capital, and they draft Victor Wemayama, get another draft in the lottery and get their point guard and draft below Colby somewhere in the middle of the first round, maybe a pick 20. Hey, crazier things have happened. I can dream, right? And then we're a dynasty within the next three years and we have championships raining down from the heavens above. <laughs> anyway, I'm being silly. So Bilal's strengths, that six foot six, he can effortlessly explode above the rim, like reading that, for the thunder dunk of justice is coming in the future, and he's built with an impressive blend of length and strength, listed at 230 pounds, and with a reported wingspan of seven foot three, Bilal can handle every type of assignment on the defensive end, and that's something that you need in today's NBA, players that can switch on defense. All right, right now I'm guarding a three. I got to switch to the four. I got to switch to the one. So the defensive versatility is something the Spurs could definitely use. They were a bad, bad defensive team last year. We already know Jeremy Sohan can play the one through five, have another player that can maybe play the one through four, maybe in the five because of his wingspan. Yeah, we'll see. What other strengths does he have? Well, right now defense is truly the calling card for him. Again, something we need. Let him roam off non-shooters, and he's a constant threat to swat shots from the weak side or slip into passing lanes for a steal. He gets up quickly and is extremely light on his feet. I like when it rings so far. A three-point volume isn't where it needs to be, but his mechanics and touch are projectable. On the offensive glass, he's an absolute beast. That's good to know. We need some second chance opportunities because we miss our threes more often. They're not going in than they're going in. So having a good offensive rebounder on the court, very helpful. He might not offer much on the ball, but he creates offensive opportunities with his awareness and athleticism. Okay, everything sounds so good for the most part so far offensively. If they were to draft him, he's not starting, but he could be a very, very, very valuable asset coming off the bench and giving us some defensive firepower off the bench too, which the Spurs don't have a whole lot of. Actually, let me think. Do we really have any defensive firepower off the bench from last season? Uh, not really. As far as his weaknesses, well, there's a lot here. We're going to go over it. Let me move this up a little bit. I just realized you can't see that. He does not possess the ability to handle the rock nimbly in traffic. His rudimentary handles make it difficult for him to get much going by himself, and his offensive production is heavily reliant on teammates or second-chance buckets around the rim. That actually kind of reminds me of Kellen a little bit. Just a little bit. Could struggle to offensively in the half court. He has extreme limitations off the dribble combined with his low three-point volume. Could make it hard for certain teams to stomach blow in the short term. That could mean extensive G League time to begin his career. Okay, you know what, though, as a San Antonio Spurs fan, we've had players develop in the G League and turn out pretty darn good. He does have touch around the rim and body control for tough finishes, but if he can't significantly increase the craftiness of his handles, he will be forever limited to a secondary role. Okay, so a worst-case scenario, maybe he's a very solid defensive player with some offensive firepower off the bench. I'm actually okay with that. And what do they have for the conclusion? Well, he should get a lot of looks late in the lottery range, especially from teams with a strong track record of player development, and the proper infrastructure to support the growth of a such young, innately gifted individual. Hmm, which team in the NBA is really, really good at that? Dang, I don't know. So this is an intriguing prospect. The most intriguing thing with Blau Colabelli is you get the chance to play with Victor Wembanyama. Yes, to say it a hundred times, the Spurs are drafting Victor Wembanyama number one overall. To have, you know, I think that would help Victor with the transition from 
being overseas to Lenny, I assume he lives overseas, and moving to America, moving to presuming Texas, and having one of his former teammates there could really just make it uh, an easy transition into the NBA life. So if the Spurs could get him at the right spot in the first round, if he does draft, because again, that projected draft range is ridiculous. It's not often I do scouting reports and see a player with a draft profile ranging from 10 to 30. That is very open-ended from a lottery pick to borderline second round pick. I don't know. I mean, if he's there at 33 for some for some for second reason, then I think the Spurs got to jump all over him in the second round at 33. As far as getting in between 10 and 30, I think we're going to have to play it by ear. I'm sure there's going to be a lot of movement in the draft and a lot of trades on draft night. If he's there at 20, 25, maybe the Spurs take some of the extra draft capital, trade it to a team that's there, and, and pick him up. I don't know. It would be interesting what the Spurs do. If he becomes a Spur, great. If he doesn't, best of luck to him wherever he goes. Spurs fans, again, let me know down below. Would you want to see him and Wendy on the same team? Do you think that would be beneficial to both players? I think so. Appreciate you all for tuning in. And as always, get ready for it. Earphone users beware. Go Spurs go!